Yes, 
he humbles you while letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna. He did it. Oh, I can't wait to get there. He let you get wrong, God. He let you starve so that you would have nothing left and realize he's all you need. A food previously not known to do with your ancestors. He let you go give you something to give you something to do. So that's what he wants. He did to teach you that people do not live out their own forever by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. For all these 40 years, your clothes they were out and your feet in, you must have to go out to you, Catalyst Church. You may not think I sit there and I didn't get your way, but I did. You're still standing and you're here today because I sit there and you. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good to take you to a good place, to a land I promised you. It's not just true for Israel, it's true for us. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him, revering him, respecting him as your father. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a good season, a good place. All that know you may know he's leading you somewhere, not nowhere. A good land flowing of streams and pools of water with fountains and streams that brush out, brush out in the valleys and in the hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grape, of grape vines, fig trees, and pomegranates of all and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful, where the bank account is not empty, and you don't even know how you're going to get to get food. Stop paying for it to pick it in the school year, and you know, it's going to be abundant in the hills. I used to think this. We need to be in a field because here's the thing. All this is attributed to the God and more. Because livestock and produce is how they produce life, but it's way more for us now. And God wants to lead you. He is a God. And He wants to lead you to more. And when your prayers get answered, we need to be in the field. Be sure to the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. When you get there, the God says, but that is the time to be careful. Not when you're losing, when you're winning. When you get to the top of the mountain, you better remember who got you there because it's easy to forget. I forget, you forget, for I forget. Beware that in your plenty, when you get what you pray for, when you get the wife, the family, whether you build your forever home, when God gives you more, when this church grows and reaches people and does music here, we're not a bad one, rolling smoke. Remember then that it wasn't us, it was God. Beware that in your plenty, we do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands and regulations and decrees because they are not for you and they are for you. That I'm giving you today. For when you have a full and prosperous, when you get that testimony, all of you that are hurting right now, when you get that testimony and realize that you truly are going to come to this season like you were last season. And have no permanent homes to live in. And when your flocks and herds have become very large and your children go and multiply along with everything else, when you get the plenty that God has for you, the promise of it, because He's got something for you to be careful. Do not become proud at the time at that time and forget the Lord your God. He's saying this again, y'all. He's saying it twice to be redundant. He's saying it twice because it's important. Don't forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Do not forget that He led you through the great and terrifying wilderness of poisonous snakes and scorpions. Some of you want to bed with snakes at night. Some of you work with snakes and scorpions. Scorpions don't just happen in the desert like they did thousands of years ago. Poisonous fights happen in the workplace at the club last night. You can be married to them. You can have parents and kids that will bite you. People can bite you. He says, you don't, you don't you forget that I saved you from that, where it was so hard and dry. The seeds dry out that stuff. He gave you water from the rock. He fed you water where there was no water. He made water where there was no water. He fed you with manna in the wilderness of food unknown to your ancestors. He trained this again because it is so important. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did all this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this love with my own strength and energy, but that you did not. It is not my power, it is not my mind, it is not my spirit, say the Lord. Remember the Lord your God, He is the one who gives you power to be successful. Anything good in you or comes to you did not come from you, every good and perfect gift of God just comes from the Lord. In order to fulfill the covenant, He confirms your ancestors for the oath of the God keeps His promises. But I assure you of this, if you forever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, we follow other gods all the time. Money, ambition, 
You may make up a church. Church may be a drug city. You don't come here. You come here looking for what you can, what you can prove. No, you can not for the presence of God. Anything can be another God. It ain't just idols like that. It looks different now. It looks still the same. If he says, if you ever forget the Lord, you're going to follow other gods and get it and seek outlets and satisfaction in other things. Worship and value down to him, he will certainly be destroyed because that is the epitome of his function and destructive living. Just as the Lord has destroyed other nations in your path, that destroys himself, is what he's saying. He will also be destroyed if you again refuse to obey the Lord your God. That's intent. It's ending week two of Lexus more. I want you to see that Lexus more because it's simple. And I want to keep it simple. I want to speak to whatever you're in. And it is very simple. Toil. Say that with me, say toil. God does not want you to just make it and survive it. Toil. Say toil. Say you want to know the promise of God and all my people from oldest to youngest to the Lord 17 times. Uh, never been married, never think you're going to get married, no money, single woman, no mama, no daddy. Say toil. Through, I just want to simplify it. Say through. Through to the other side. That's the will of God. Whatever you're in, whatever you've been stuck in, sink it in. Through to the other side. To the next level, the Bible puts it like this. From glory to glory, to faith to faith. Through. Say it to three people as you're sinking in spirit and say through. Through. Well, right now, just see to whenever anybody's in that whole line in person and watches it months left later. Lord, help me just Lord, speak through me so that I can just speak to whatever somebody is like me. Because the promise of this will not be made is true to us. Do it to the Father. All things work together for good because you're bringing us to the good points. And whatever we can, no matter how long we've been in it, Lord, that's what the will of God is. The longest intro ever. The longest He starts his passage out. You gotta realize that Israel's in the wilderness, y'all. God freed them from slavery, but they haven't taken the promised land. They're stuck outside the promised land in this passage. It's outside the will of God. They're scared to take it. They are stuck. And God says, I want you to rest in the
you're stuck in cycles, you will not make them fix it. Don't take change because there are some things that you love Jesus that you are holding back in your life. You either won't be honest about them or you won't do much about them because you are stuck. You know they can see it, you know it's costing you to miss the promise and blessing of your God of God in your life, whether it's habits, whether it's benefits, whether it's God, but you continue to hold it. Because if that indecision in your life, it will cost you. And what happens is default mode, by the way, there's a scripture I love in Hebrews, a lot of Hebrews in the New Testament says, you should have been teachers by now, but you are drinking milk and not eating meat. He says you should be eaters. I love that. Sometimes in my life, I'm like, I should be a little bit more safe than I am in this season, but I kind of got, oh, I lost focus, I got arrogant, I got irritable. We want those terms in the 5, 10, 30, 40, 60 years, free divorces, bankruptcy, financial strain, strain relationships, strange relationships, whatever it may be, you lose, you raise, what happens to us, we get stuck. It wasn't supposed to last this long. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to go like this. It wasn't, and before you know it, you were to be on Israel. We get to stop. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right we get stuck in the battles that we are going to consume us. We get stuck in the worry. I'm telling you, I can get stuck in the victory. So you got major growth in your life, and if the growth becomes more responsibility, more kids, more responsibility. I got some pregnant folks in my house, one of them's right there, giving birth to my granddaughter, and I'm going to tell you one thing it's more the blessing to take. We get stuck. 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 But I'm here to tell you, whatever you're in, whatever marital issues you're in, whatever financial issues you're in, whatever you're in, Whatever pride, ego, whatever stress and insecurity in your life, whatever you're in, God's will is to lead you through and not leave you in it. I'm going to say that again because some of you are hurting so bad. You were so lost in the details. I get it. I am you. I'm human. You get so lost in what doesn't matter, and you used to be focused on what matters. And I'm here to tell you, whatever battles or whatever you're lost in, whatever insecurities, whatever shame and guilt has done to you in your life, I'm here to tell you, or whatever self doubt you have in your life right now, God, whatever financial and relationship dysfunction you have, whatever addiction, diagnosis, diabetes, cancer, anxiety, whatever it is, God. God's will is not to leave you in it, it's to lead you through it. You've been depressed, you've been broken, you can't get out of bed, but like once a week, and you can sit away from public like you're 95. God's will is not to leave you in it, it's to lead you through it. Say it with me, God, let's say through. 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 That is the will of God for your life. Through. And he says, remember. Remember what he has done. Remember what he has done. Remember what he's done. Remember. God, he says this in the passage, but just so you know, God didn't let that 40 years that were stuck in the desert. You know, they didn't pack their bags to go to the desert, right? But I closed with their bags when I was stuck in the desert. It's not like you got to a 40 year trip and you get to prepare and play. No, it just happened. And it says they're, 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 they're tangled. Didn't grab their feet anymore, so he says. I used to spend 40 years in the heat of the desert. He said, I fed you now. Nobody knew what that bread was. You don't know what's going to come when God's going to get a rest of you. You don't know what's going to come like you're going to bring you out. All you know is he says, Lord. And that's what I knew what that was. You know what it was now? But we get then. He said, Your clothes get wet. I have one pair of clothes. 40 years. I just keep getting that bad way in the desert. You lose that bad way in the desert. But still.
Then we need to be focused on which is what we're going to have to make sure that we're very truthful and get away. That is a big crisis that exposes us all. You want to focus on your neighbors and that's what's going to be part of your steps and your methods. And so what happens is God, it says that God tested them so that they can see it. When things go sideways, there's some things that you're paying attention that you will actually see that you need to work on. There is no other season than a wilderness season in what you're going through and what your kids are dealing to see the things that you need to see God and to really get back before you go to the next level and the next step and to be able to pursue this promise, a promise by your promise by the will of God to go through and you better look in the mirror and be honest. We got people on this day, I'm so thankful they'll fall or stop singing because they're crying because God's working on their life. I don't believe in church, I don't believe in church in this church. No church really does this for me. A lot of times churches really fall apart and they don't get you. You want to see it? Christ is praised out. Christ is praised out. What they will get brought out, what was in them. Same as you're going your life. What you're in, what you're out of. What's in here? God says that God humbled him. Dr. Timothy Keller says it this way. He says that um, you don't know what is all you need, so what is all you have. So we'll keep it simple. I want to simplify what you need, and then that's what I want to simplify. You really don't know that God is enough until you don't have enough, and nothing is enough, and nobody is enough. It's in your out of resources and relationships that can rescue you from whatever. Until you're out of options and opportunities that you can go on and tell the lies that you can tell them because you should be in your fear and your right. And he says, He did this for the home. That's what the pastor says. I wanted to humble them because I was leading them through the wilderness to the promise and he was true for you. God taught them that man shall not live by bread alone. That's what it said. Jesus spoke this from the end of the sentence and the wilderness. He was starving to death. He was literally starving to death. And then he put the bread in the bread and says, I didn't even want to live, did you? And he says, Man, you're not going to live my bread alone. You won't live by your bank account. You're successful, you're good enough, you're good kids, and that you're ready to have a great marriage. I don't know how to run this again, marriage, but the spouse holds it together because you're a big mess that just refuses to be good. No, Jesus says, Man, you're not going to live my bread alone. He says, God taught Israel, He teaches us. That you cannot live out there alone, but by every word that puts his out of the mouth of God. Here's the thing they're not learning from me, you need to learn from you, God spoke to them and across to all of us. That you are not ready for growth and increase. You're not ready for the promotion. You're not ready for the next level. The things that you're praying for God to break you through and to break you out of, how do you know you're not ready for it? Because you're hungry for it. You are hungry for his promises, not his presence. And you got it. You don't get his promises until you're hungry for him. And, and God said, I have to tell you in that 40 years that you put your trust in, I used it. I wanted to tell you that if you got me, nothing else matters. And you are hungry for his blessings if you're missing him. That's why people leave church when life falls apart. Because it doesn't pay. It was conventional. It was like in the NFL draft, it was a contract. That's when you can be committed. But other than that, no, no. God, 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 that's what you achieve. Don't make sense all the way, but you really should. And so he said, I'm teaching you that I'm all you need. I'm hungry. I'm going to I'm not punishing you. I'm not leaving you in it. He says, I have some use in this passage. You read it like I hope you'll go back and read it. That's why I did this. Um, he says, like a parent, a good parent disciplines a child. Not to beat them down, but to build them up, to lead them to a better place, a better mindset. Girl, you can't have a bad thing to say, because you'll get caught out, and you won't be nothing. You will know I will marry you if you do something like this. So I'm, not, I'm supposed to raise you up. And the Bible says, and in here, he says, it's like a parent. I'm getting you to a better place. It's God's will for whatever you're in. Doesn't matter the details, whatever you're in, it still leads you through to a better place, a promised land, a good place. All things work together. Good. He is a good father. That is what he is. He says, man, I'm not trying to tease you. He says, man, I, I, I didn't think you need to get me in your case, Jesus says. How much more than I need to get it? He is leading you through. And here's the thing about your life. God wasn't just interested in thinking we need to get out of slavery. This is my whole message for all of you. Much so. God wasn't just interested in leading them out of slavery. Here I am. 400 years of slavery left right out. He 
He went, Jesus said to me, and I'll tell you what He wanted to leave it to the promised land. To my friend, it was just his life, the promised land. He left it on the slave line. But they still were talking, walking, making decisions, reacting like slaves, even though he took them on the slave line. The wilderness is where he took the slave line. Slavery and say you can kill it, and you say, no, 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 that's the first step. God wants to take you to the promised land. Your purpose. Your, what you're in right now, God is leading you through it. He's leading your destiny, your family, and your family, your kids one day. Whenever we all tell the time, he sat right here when we pray up and says, I said, people usually walk away from church, but they're the only thing that they've only been involved in check the box churches. But when you got deep roots, you don't walk away from that. Never take one again because I did my time. 
It's great. Here's the thing. You know, I don't think it's really like that. 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 Thank you. It's a pattern of answers. It's questions about how to be built. God is bigger than my theology. God is bigger than my questions and doubts. God is bigger than my past and my plan and my success. God is bigger than the things I don't understand. God is bigger than why I have to bury my spouse. It's why I have to bury my son. But God is bigger than the things that don't make sense. That is what you get. That is what Jesus says. So some things God has got to be the answer. That's why it says on the way of truth and the law. I'm going to find the truth. And when you get there, he says, it's not as we will get there. We're going to see this whole thing. No matter what stop, no matter what sell, no matter what happens, through it all, no matter what Job said, no slave, and yet we're not trusting him, but the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. The Lord said, he's Lord, when you get there, that's when he says, I'll just be careful. You get the answers to your prayers when you get there. When you get where you go and you see the testimony, and you get to tell everybody. People constantly tell me now. They're like, hey, I'm ready to tell my testimony. I'm like, no, you may not let you. We need to, 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 Remember who got you where you are. Remember who got you to where you are. You are a player to the gods. Don't you be judging any young guys. You are a player. You're still a player. You may not be playing the field with girls, but when you play around the employees so that you get a promotion, don't judge them. You are a player, but God got you to where you are. Don't you dare judge them and forget. Girls, uh, you're all, 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 all my students are naturated ladies. Don't you judge that girl. You could have got pregnant too. You were freaking at that thing. He was there for you. Almost everybody in this room is proving that they don't want to. Don't act like you were Jesus now, but you were then, or whatever the child is waiting on you. You could be locked up. The Bible says he is. He thought he was fighting for you, and you weren't fighting for yourself. Right now, you thought he was fighting for you, and you're not fighting for you. The Bible says God will remain faithful when we are faithless. You can't take credit for the good kids. The one good thing you feel like you can't know the kids. No. Let them go. You didn't raise them. They can say the Lord raised them up. The Bible says for God raised you and then say, through faith, that part of yourself is the gift of God bless the connection of us. The passage right here, he says, I did it so that you knew that the accomplishments and the glory that I'm going to show you and the gift that you raised, you had nothing to do with it. It was God bless. And when you get there, you know, I want you to remember that I got you there because that's the moments that we are waiting. So I think, oh, I made some good decisions. I did some good things. And you start judging everybody and talking down to everybody. It was by grace because God takes us through. God takes us through. Not you. We surrender. We see this glory because it carries us, drags us, whatever it takes. Right? We're going to make that glory. Jesus didn't talk about the actual life that much. Even verses that we preach like it was heaven. He wasn't talking about the answer like Jesus was actually talking a lot about here. Think about it, it's not great. Give us your death, our day of bread. This day, don't worry about some more. Today, have enough trouble and challenge and growth that you need to get through. Your will be done, and speak to God, pray, pray for glory. Your will be done here, as in heaven. Here! We built the we built the church in our culture on getting out of here. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get out of that situation, I'm gonna get more money, I'm gonna get more time with my spouse and kids, I'm gonna get more here. Again. Here. Jesus said, I give, I've come to give you life. That we're talking about later. Here. Here. Your focus right now, the promise of God is right here. Until you get there, oh, that thing God is right here, right now. Paul said, if any man be a Christ, this is a new creature. The old is gone, the new is gone. It's the gun, is what it really says. I love it, you know, it's the gun, because the flesh, it's yet to come here, as in heaven. So whenever you're in, I mean, when you stand here, pay prayer to when you come to the front. Whenever you're in, He's here with you again. And I want you to know you may have been here 17,000 times. 
Jesus says that too. He says, well, how many times have we forgiven you? Seven? Seven times seven, you know, all that stuff. His point wasn't to start counting, but seven times seven is his point is, I'm here again. I'll never forsake you. I'll never forsake you. You may have forsaken yourself. It may not make sense, and you're trying to make sense out of the people, what they do you, what life do you, the money you don't have. Through, through, here, Jesus said, here, I'll come to give you life. Here, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you and will give you life to your mortal bodies, not your eternal bodies. Here, tell somebody, say, here, say, through, say, here, say, through, say, here.